Hello friends, welcome to Codeboard. So in this video, we'll see some basic Java questions which will be really useful for your interview. We'll be covering topics like data types, variables and operators, which we have studied in the past video. So let's get started with this video. So the first question is what is declaration and definition of a variable and can both be done together? So first we'll see what is declaration and definition. When you just say int a, we say we are declaring a variable because we are just telling the compiler that a is a variable of type integer. We have not assigned any value. So it is called as declaration. But when we say a equal to 3, we are defining a with some value. So we are assigning a value and it is called definition. And yes, we can combine both declaration and definition together by saying int a equal to 3. So here we have combined two statements into one. The next question is can variable names start with a digit? So the answer is no because there are some rules and conventions to follow while naming variables. So let's see both. First we'll see rules that are predefined by Java and are compulsory to follow. So the first rule says that variable name should start with letters, underscore or a dollar sign. Anything else than this is not allowed in the variable name at the initial position and after the first letter it can contain digits so anything like number one number two is valid no spaces and other special characters are allowed in the variable name and also keywords of java are not allowed as a variable name so there are some predefined keywords in java which are used for other purpose like int new double float etc you cannot use this keywords as the variable name then there are some conventions which are not compulsory to follow but it is a good practice to follow. So the first is that the variable name should be in camel case convention. That is if the variable name has two words, first word, first letter should be small and after that every word, first letter should be capital. So underscore and dollar are allowed but it is not recommended to use it mostly. So you only use letters wherever possible. The variable should be limited. So there is no limitation on the length of the variable in Java, but it is a good practice to, you know, give a meaningful and limited name of a variable because you need to use it again and again. So readability wise, it is a good practice to limit the length of the variable. So the next question is how many primitive data types are in Java? So we have already studied primitive data types and we know there are eight data types in Java with each having its own size and range and each having its its own purpose such as integer is used for whole numbers and characters is for characters etc. So we have a detailed video on primitive data types. If you want to know more please click on the link given in the description box below for primitive data types. The next question is why are primitive data types not object? So everything in, data, uh, in Java is in classes and objects. So why are primitive data types not in object? So that is because Primitive data types consume less memory and can be accessed faster. So they are not objects and they are used a lot. So creating a heap memory as objects do will be very costly. So that is why primitive data types are not objects. What is the purpose of data types? So why do we have to write a data type, you know, before a variable? So that is because data type defines the type of a variable and assigns memory to it accordingly because compiler wants to know how much memory should be assigned to a variable because we don't want to assign a lot of memory for a small integer or a small character. That is why it is important to tell the compiler what type of a variable you are going to use for your operations. So what is the difference between AND that is bitwise AND with a single ampersand sign and logical AND that is with double ampersand sign on a boolean condition. So both are used to check if the conditions are true and written true or false in the boolean conditions. So first we'll see logical AND. It does not check the next condition if the first condition is false. So suppose for example, a greater than one AND and a less than 10. If we are checking this condition and a is equal to zero. So obviously our first condition is false. So the compiler doesn't need to check the second condition because in AND, if the first condition is false, whatever might be the second condition, the result is going to be false. So it is not necessary to check the second condition. So this is the advantage of logical AND. But in bitwise AND, both the conditions are checked 
irrespective of the first condition. Also remember, bitwise is also used on number for checking the bits. And it compares the bits and gives the results accordingly. Here, logical and does not check the next condition and it completely depends on the first condition. Similarly with or, if the first condition is true, it, logical or does not check the second condition. But in bitwise or, both or all the conditions in the statement are checked. The difference between right shift operator with two angle brackets and right shift operator with three angle brackets. So the right shift operator with two angle brackets is a signed right shift operator. Meaning the sign of a number matters in this operator. So when you use these operators, we know if we do 8 right shift 2, 8 is moved by 2 bits. So 2 bits are removed from the end of the number and 2 zeros are added before the number. So if the number is negative, instead of 2 zeros at the beginning of the number, 2 ones are added before the number. So that is signed right shift operator. Depending on the sign, 0 or 1s are added. In unsigned right shift operator, that is 3 brackets or 3 angle bracket, it removes the bits from the end of the number and only zeros are added before the number, irrespective of the sign of the number. So your sign of the number does not matter. That is the only difference. The next question is about difference between unary post and pre operators. So we know that unary post operator increments the number by so if we have unary post increment it increments the number by 1 so when we use unary post increment operator it's assign it assigns the value first to the variable and then increments here so for example if we have int b equal to 4 plus plus or 4 minus minus b's value is going to be 4 itself because after assigning the value 4 is incremented to 5 and unary pre increment or decrement operator first increments and then assigns the value so for int b equal to plus plus 4 b is going to be 5 because first the value is incremented and then assigned to the variable so the next question is what is the difference between a single equal to sign and a double equal to sign a single equal to sign is an assignment operator and it assigns a value to a variable so when we say int a equal to 3, value of 3 is stored in a variable a. But double equal to sign is a logical operator and it checks if the two values are equal. If the values are equal, it returns true, otherwise false. So this is the difference. And our last question is, what is the difference between automatic and manual typecasting? So automatic typecasting is done directly by the compiler when the target data type is larger than the source data type. So here in the example, we want to convert from int to double. So int is a smaller data type and double is a larger data type. So in this case, we don't need to do anything, but just assign the value of int to double and the compiler converts it automatically. And the D has value 3.0 in the double format. But in manual or narrow type casting, target data type is smaller than the source data type. So we need to tell the compiler about the target data type. So the syntax goes as int i and in bracket we need to mention the data type in which we want to convert. So this is about automatic and manual typecasting. So these were our questions for Java interview. We'll be coming up with more questions in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned and subscribe to our channel. Also like and share this video. Thank you.